This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service with over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. Sign up using the link and promo code below to start a one-month trial absolutely free. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen or at least heard about HBO's new miniseries Chernobyl. It's a fantastic drama and richly deserves all the awards it'll probably win. But just how accurate is the series? How bad was the Chernobyl disaster? Let's rewind to April of 1986. The Vladimir I. Lenin nuclear power plant, more casually referred to as Chernobyl, after the nearby town that used to be the only landmark in the area, was destined to be a problem. This plant, home to inherently flawed RBMK reactors, is located just outside the town of Pripyat, in the northern part of Ukraine, near the Belarusian border. Around 1 a.m. on the 26th of April 1986, Chernobyl workers conducted what was meant to be a routine test. This test was intended to simulate a power outage, and required workers to intentionally disable emergency safety and power regulation systems. Long story short, thanks to a combination of reactor design flaws and user error, reactor number 4 suffered a catastrophic meltdown, vaporizing the water in the tank and causing an explosion that blasted radioactive graphite into the surrounding area. This exposed the destroyed reactor core to air and sparked a graphite fire, which sent up a massive plume of radioactive smoke, as well as what was described as a very beautiful beam of bluish light, which was one visual indication of ionized air surrounding the fire. Two men were killed immediately in the explosion, and a further 29 died from acute radiation poisoning in the days and weeks after the event, though a later report puts the total number of short-term deaths at 54, among them a helicopter crew attempting to douse the fire, and a physician and journalist who arrived shortly after the explosion. But the initial damage from the explosion and the radiation poisoning of those nearby was just the beginning of the problem. What came later would cement Chernobyl's place as the worst nuclear disaster in history. Unfortunately for the people of Pripyat, the town was not evacuated immediately, and people started falling ill, reporting uncontrollable coughing and vomiting, severe headaches, and a persistent metallic taste. It took approximately 36 hours before the order to evacuate the town was given. This was intended to be a temporary measure, and as such most people left all their belongings behind. The evacuation soon became permanent, so the city of Pripyat stands as a sort of irradiated time capsule, with homes left almost exactly as they were on that April day in 1986. The roughly 53,000 citizens were initially moved only a short distance away, but over the next 10 days, the evacuation zone would grow to 30 kilometers, and has remained that size to this day. Based on later estimates, the Reactor 4 explosion released the equivalent radioactive material of 400 of the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, significantly contaminating over 100,000 square kilometers of land, and not just in the area surrounding Chernobyl. Weather patterns carried radioactive fallout to Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, Sweden, Finland, Austria, Norway, Bulgaria, Switzerland, Greece, Slovenia, Italy, and Moldova. In fact, the first evidence of a major nuclear disaster came not from Ukraine, but from Sweden. Workers at a Swedish nuclear plant 1,100 kilometers away were found to have radioactive contaminants on their clothes. The radiation was not only detectable by these many countries, it also directly affected their food and water supply. Dark, radioactive rain collected in rivers and lakes, and seeped into the ground. Many fish became too heavily contaminated to eat, as did some livestock. Thousands of kilometers of land became uninhabitable. Chernobyl is located next to the Pripyat River, which at the time provided much of the water for Kiev's 2.4 million residents. That water became unsafe to drink or bathe in. Four square kilometers of forest near the site turned reddish brown and died, and many of the local animals with it. As recently as 2010, 1,000 boar killed in Germany's hunting season were contaminated with levels of radiation exceeding the limit for consumption. In the weeks and months after the incident, 237 people died from radiation poisoning, 31 of whom died within three months. The report states that 28 emergency workers, known as liquidators, died from acute radiation poisoning and beta burns, and 15 people died from thyroid cancer in the following years. It's estimated that somewhere around 4,000 people will eventually die from cancer directly caused by the Chernobyl incident, though it is very hard to accurately estimate the rate of cancer formation. By 2000, the number of Ukrainians receiving state benefits for radiation suffering had climbed to 3.5 million, or about 5% of the population, many of whom are citizens relocated from contaminated zones around Chernobyl. Besides the health and environmental effects, the Chernobyl disaster required an 18 billion ruble expenditure on containment and decontamination. That's the equivalent of $41.1 billion in today's money. 30 years after the incident, the spending on Belarus alone had added up to a staggering $301 billion, adjusted for inflation. 
According to a 2005 report, Ukraine still spends 5-7% to of its annual budget on Chernobyl-related expenses. To top it all off, the horrific mismanagement of the disaster was a key factor in the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. Considering all the damage Chernobyl caused, the radiation poisoning, the ruin of farmland and drinking water, the cancer and relocations, the lives lost in the immediate aftermath, Chernobyl deserves its title as the worst nuclear disaster in history. If you'd like to learn more about the natural world's response to Chernobyl, I highly recommend you check out Nature Fights Back in Chernobyl on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service for people like us, people on a lifelong quest to learn and understand. They've got over 2,400 documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the game, and they've got a bunch of material on natural and man-made disasters, like Nature Fights Back in Chernobyl. Their catalog also includes content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for you guys, you can get one month absolutely free by following the link below and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT during signup. CuriosityStream is available on all sorts of platforms, including the web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TV, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Kindle, and Apple TV. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great interesting content. Give CuriosityStream a shot and sign up for your one month free trial by visiting curiositystream.com secondthought and using the code secondthought.